Today I'm going to look at this Juniper Networks WXC250. Uh, this is an application accelerator for um, corporate networks. It does things like reducing the number of duplicate transmissions and speeds up your connection and it basically will adjust things so that a specific application will work reliably like if you have voice over IP you can set it so that's high priority uh, this is their smallest one it uses 100, 100 base T Ethernet it's a 40 gig hard drive and you know, it's only up to 2 megabits this one I know is completely useless because it's full of failed capacitors and it's not really worth fixing um, well maybe I can get some help hey guys you want to help fix some capacitors? guys? guys? you want you want to fix the capacitors? no? alright so yeah it's gonna stay broken and I'm gonna get rid of it um, Juniper is actually one of the two companies that I tend to avoid when looking for networking equipment uh, Cisco being the other they tend to use all custom stuff with a few exceptions I mean this is this is a commodity motherboard their um, routers and stuff like that they all use custom stuff the interfaces are always are almost always serial so they never have like fancy windows installs that you can mess around with nothing like that they're very it's very very rare that you can use one of their systems as a standalone computer or vice versa you know use their cell software on a standalone system although I think they're um, the Cisco PIX firewalls are the exception I think they all use off-the-shelf parts to some degree I know I had one of the models and it was practically useless it, it, it did have like a Pentium 3 but it was you know all custom power supply and everything right round back we've got a clunking power switch uh, standard IEC power input power supply fan three standard 40 millimeter fans a console port which is serial two 10 base T Ethernet ports along with push switches for crossover or straight through which is you know that shows the age of the thing if, if it's got a switch for that Mo modern Ethernet cards and switches all use I think it's called auto MDX something along those lines where it automatically will cross over straight through as needed and it looks like there's possibly three LEDs behind here or an L or a reset switch I'm not sure but there are little cutouts here on the inside we've got a Mac store hard drive a commodity standard motherboard you can tell by the fact that it has an AGP slot which is for older graphics cards it's not something that's usually on workstations there's a small board in the corner that handles all the bypassing you can see the relays and the Ethernet ports uh, it actually has the shortest Ethernet cables I've ever seen running into it but we'll get to those in a second the motherboard has a parallel port with a modified connector and a wire coming off it to the uh, bypass board and there's two Ethernet ports, some USB, a little fan duct here. As you can see the capacitors are very much dead. These uh, KZG series are just terrible. Every single board I've ever gotten with them they're all failed. Uh, it actually does have a bunch of smaller sizes on them. They look intact but I still want to trust them. All the big ones are bulging and yeah garbage. Got out the motherboard. Uh, this is a motherboard made by iTox. It's the G4E 620-N-G, and uh, yeah, it's just a basic uh, 400 megahertz front side bus. Although it's 400 and 533, depending on the processor. Uh, Intel 845E chipset. Nothing too interesting. It just uses um, some 
normal DDR. Get that out. Yep, 512 megs DDR400. Oh, it's actually ECC. Uh, some of them do actually support ECC. Some of these motherboards don't, according to uh, their like product guide. It has onboard um, CF slot with a 256 meg SanDisk card in it. Oh, that's kind of dumb. They put a pin header right here, so it kind of scrapes along when you take out the card. Many generations of slots right here. We've got a somewhat modern AGP slot for video cards, which obviously this thing has no use for. It doesn't even have onboard video. Uh, there are four PCI 32-bit slots, and people may not even recognize these, but these are very old 16-bit ISA slots, which are tied all the way back to the original uh, IBM PCs. So, yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't need any slots, really, because the case can't support them, but it's weird that it's using a motherboard with all these ridiculous slots on it. It's a nice copper heat sink on this thing. Let's see if I can get these screws out. They use a slightly smaller than usual Phillips 1. The processor is a simple 2.5 gigahertz Celeron. These are Pentium 4 based. It's a 400 megahertz bus speed, a teeny tiny 128K cache. Very, very useless. As for internal drives, you've got two parallel ATA ports and a single floppy drive connector. The external ports include two PS2 ports, which are covered up. Uh, two COM ports, one of which runs to the back console connector. The other one runs using this internal cable to the small uh, board with the relays. There's also a parallel port. Parallel port had this stupid little adapter on it running two wires. This is probably something like voltage sense, just to see if the computer's running. And two Ethernet ports, both of which are 100 base T for USB ports. I think these are actually USB 2. And that's pretty much it. There's not much on this motherboard, it's except for a bunch of crappy capacitors. I noticed this interesting little part on these uh, Ethernet ports. They're little chokes or filters or something, but they're actually mounted on, um, what is this, an S SOC8? And it's kind of neat seeing a little like standard package, but obviously a non-standard part on it. Very weird. The board had quite a few different types of capacitor on it. We have, uh, well, Electrolytics. Uh, the failed KZG series, you got KY series, some ones made by OST, which I've never heard of, even the odd um, surface mount one. But yeah, as a matter of course, if you were fixing this, you would replace the KZ, KZG series first, because you know those are broken. So you replaced all, replace all those, see if the system works, and if it does, replace everything, because chances are there are more failed caps on it, or failing caps, but at least you want to see if it's working before you go through the trouble of replacing them all, unless you really, really, really need it. The copper heat sink is of decent quality, very heavy, copper all the way around. It's probably like an aluminum core, but very, very nice. This is the bypass board. You can see the four relays along the top, actual genuine Omron ones, top quality. Uh, you've got two Ethernet ports to come in from the motherboard and two Ethernet ports that stick out the back of the case. Two nice little push switches, toggle switches. There's a Philips uh, ADC51 based micro microcontroller on the board. This is obviously handling all the relay switching and checking to see if the computer's crashed, that sort of thing. There's a couple, well three, uh, two pin headers here. One of which goes to the motherboard, one of which goes to the parallel port, one of which goes to some LEDs on the front. I think they just light up the bypass. Got a six pin programming header for the microcontroller and a serial connector. Now this is actually a huge uh, box header. Very tall. I don't know why it's so big. I might pull that off just to take a look. Uh, there's another header right here. I think this is the one that goes to the motherboard. There's a 
push button here, which probably manually switches these or something. And just some little odd bits and pieces. There's also a 4-pin Molex connector, a standard hard drive connector for the uh, board. It's made by Parabit, and it's uh, designed by LEJ. Or sorry, JEJ. Is that a person? Is that a group? I don't know. It also came with the smallest Ethernet cables I have ever seen in my entire life. One of the JMC fans, uh, these things were pretty damn loud when I had it plugged in. So they seem to be pretty standard server fans. 40 millimeter fans are always loud. They have to spin very, very, very quickly to make up for the fact that they're so tiny to get enough airflow. The power supply is just one of these 300 watt Emacs power supplies. I've opened these up before, there's nothing too interesting in them. The CF card had a basic operating system on it to boot it up. And the hard drive, once unerased, had over 1,500 emails from a New York based communications firm. Uh, when will you people learn that when you throw away drives or sell them to recyclers, you should erase them properly?